hello friends welcome to another tutorial in digital signal processing in this tutorial we'll talk about transforms we'll talk about the types of transforms how are they classified how are they related to each other how can we obtain one transform from another so if this is something that interests you then keep watching till the end the basic definition of a transform is an operation that takes us from one domain to another and that will decide as the first differentiating criteria that we have transforms for continuous time signals and for discrete time signals i assume that you know the difference between the two a continuous time signal is represented by x of t and when we transform this signal we will go into some other domain that will be a function of frequency so in this case in laplace transform we'll take our signal from the time domain to frequency domain and it will be represented by capital x of s and in uh, fourier transform we'll take our x of t to capital x of omega which is again a frequency domain so a transform is nothing but a mathematical operation that will take us from the time domain into frequency domain and similarly here also discrete time signal if we perform a transform on a discrete time signal especially a z transform that will take us into x of z and the discrete time fourier transform will take us to x of omega but if we look at the mathematical operation that takes us from time domain to frequency domain that mathematical operation is something of this sort it says that if we want to find the laplace transform of a continuous time signal we can go from minus infinity to infinity x of t e raised to the power minus s t dt and where s is the uh, s plane and its value is represented by sigma plus j omega so if i substitute the value of s here in e raised to the power minus st and i expand this what i get is two components one component will be xt and e raised to the power minus sigma t and another will be x t e raised to the power minus j omega t now if you look at this component this is the component that features in the fourier transform so in other words you can say that fourier transform is a special case of laplace transform where sigma is 0 or s is just j omega and this is a uh, very important also in terms of deriving the relationship between laplace transform and, and fourier transform yeah, you can say laplace transform is a universal transform that takes into account two factors sigma and omega where sigma is a representative of system and omega is a representative of frequency so if you wish to find the stability of the system and also analyze its frequency response laplace transform is the solution and if you are just concerned about finding the frequency response of the system a simpler version of laplace transform can be used which is the fourier transform where we just fo focus our attention on omega which is the frequency component so we can say laplace tra transform has a special case in fourier transform and on the other hand if we look at the discrete time signals z transform is represented using n going from minus infinity to infinity x of n z raised to the power minus n where uh, z is a complex number and is represented by r e raised to the power j theta or omega so again it has two components x can be combined with r e raised to the power minus n and x of n can be combined with e raised to the power j theta or j omega and if you look at the discrete time fourier transform uh, 
the second component of the Z transform is just featuring here. So again, we can say that DTFT is a special case of Z transform where R is equal to one. Again, uh, the Z transform is a universal transform for discrete time signals, which takes into account the region of convergence, which is the area in which it operates. It talks about its stability and also its frequency response, which is denoted by omega. But in discrete time Fourier transform, we are just concerned about omega. So we have kept the uh, R to be equivalent to unity. So ROC is a very important criteria while solving questions on Z transform, which is not there in Fourier transform because it's a special case where R is equal to one. Now we, we have seen the relationship between Laplace and Fourier and Z and DTFT. But if you look at the relationship between Laplace and Z, you can easily go from Laplace to Z using this simple trick where you can substitute e raised to power s is equal to z and this integration can be substituted with a summation sign and t can be substituted with n so you can see that this integral sign is replaced by summation sign and n of course also is going from minus infinity to infinity x of t t is replaced by x of n and e raised to power s is replaced by z so you can easily go from Laplace to Z and find an interpretation also. So this is how these uh, transforms are classified and related to each other. It, they're pretty simple. Uh, if you start differentiating them from the very basic element of difference, that is the signals can be classified into two categories continuous time and discrete time and for both of them we have um, two transforms each one is a universal transform and one is a special transform and that's how you can make sense out of the transforms in your syllabus and i hope this quick video was of help if you liked the video give it a thumbs up consider subscribing i'll see you around take care bye bye